Number 26, a ray of light emitted beneath the surface of an unknown liquid uh, with air above it undergoes total internal reflection. What is the index of refraction for the liquid and its likely identification? All right, so check out number 20. All right, I went through the idea of how to think through this when they're talking about total internal reflection. All right, um, and uh, also number 25 might come in handy as well. So let's use the formula. The critical angle here, and this was developed in number 20, is N2 over N1. Okay, N2 represents the index of refraction for the refracted ray, all right, and uh, N1 will represent the index of refraction for the incident ray. So it says, in according to the picture, it says there's an unknown liquid. So N1 represents the liquid, and the it is unknown. The N1 is unknown. N2, they said it's air above it. So what is the index of refraction for air? Well, it's about 1, right? It's like 1.000293 or something. So they want us to calculate the... Uh, critical angle, right? And, oh, actually, no, never mind. They don't. Well, they do. They do. But that's not the overall question. So it wants to know the index of refraction, so for the liquid. So let's take a look at this formula. And what they're asking us to solve for is N1, okay? The reason, again, why I'm using this formula is because they're talking about total internal reflection. Now, in order to find N1, I need to know two things. I need to know the critical angle, and I need to know the uh, N2 value. Now I do know N2, that is simply the air value, all right? But what I don't know at the moment is the critical angle. But what they gave me, and that's this little angle right in the picture, but what they, they gave me enough information to kind of solve that, all right? They gave me the sides of this, oh look at this, doesn't this look like a triangle? Now you can do this in a couple of ways. I think what might be, well it doesn't really matter, but what might be the easiest way is to calculate this angle over here. And then realize that, you know, this whole part makes a 90 degree angle, essentially, right? There's a 90 degree angle, and we could subtract them the two. So while I calculate this, I'm just going to call it uh, theta, you know, theta, theta, theta is good. All right. So this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. Huh, so I must be using tangent, right? So tangent of that angle is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent side. Solving for the angle, I'd have to take the inverse tan of both sides. That would cancel then the tangent on the left hand side and just be the opposite side then over the adjacent side and here then it's going to be simply then inverse tan of the opposite side of 15 over then the adjacent of 13.4 now you technically do not need to convert these into meters and the reason being is because it's simply a ratio the units are going to cancel no matter what you can convert it into meters if you like but you don't necessarily have to so there's 15 divided by 13.4 I know I say in a lot of the problems that I usually convert, but when it's very clear to me that I don't need to, I just don't bother. If there's a whole bunch of conversions and calculations, then I start just converting them. Um, but anyway, this is now going to be, that theta value is now going to be equal to 48.2. Okay? So, 48.2 degrees. So if that theta value, let's take a look back up at the picture. If this theta value is going to be 48.2, and I want to find this piece... But I know if I extend this line on down, I know that this creates a right angle in here. Well, then can I just take 90 and subtract then the 48.2 to find my critical angle? Sure, right? So do it. 41.8, right? So this is 41.8. This is indeed now my critical angle. That's what I needed to know. Now I can just go about and solve, okay? So this is then going to be 48 point, excuse me, 41.8 is equal to then inverse sine of N2, which was air, over then our unknown material. All right, let's clean some of this work up. All right. And let's do it. So what you got to do is take the sine of both sides to cancel that inverse sine, right? So you're going to write sine of this thing equals then sine of this whole thing that just goes bye bye and what you're left with then plug it in so sine of that exact value is going to be about 0 0.6662 and that's equal 1 over n2 oh well how did that change to n2 sorry about that guys i just noticed that that should be a 1 n1 all right doesn't doesn't really matter but you know keeping consistent here it should be n1 um so just simply cross multiply this. Look at how nice and simple this is, right? N1 then is equal to, what do we got? 
n1 is n equal to 1 divided by that value, 1.501. So 1.501, that's the n1 value. And now this, we can go look this up on a table and figure out what the material is. So let's go. Here's the table. Where is about 1.501 or so? Right? If you look through it, look through you got to look for the closest one. Be careful, you might go to plexiglass, eh, there's something closer. Benzene, okay? Benzene. A nice carcinogen. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope this helps, and I will see you in the next question. Take it easy.